to prove an idea that has great merit, um, you know, we go out there and we, we do exactly that. We put questions up on the board, you know, can the same principle used to suspend bridges be applied to a chair? This was an effort in thinking about how we would drastically reduce the amount of materials um, used in a chair product. And this was also an open question from Herman Miller. Is it possible to create a chair with all of the performance criteria that you expect out of the Herman Miller brand? High design, high performance, great ergonomics, design for the environment. Is it possible to match that but at about half or less the price of current production? And so our theory is that by using a, a radically different structure, similar to bridges, we could get there. And all the first sort of iterations of sketches aren't about aesthetics. They're really about principles. Principles, you know, we're trying to, to prove. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because, you know, so much of design is still about making. It's still about drawing. It's still about sketches. These are, these are full-size drawings of the back of the chair. And when I tell people that what's, what's in this little animation and video is about three or four percent of the production of the things that took place, um, of the amount of prototypes and drawings that we created to get to the final solution of the sail chair, they're amazed. And I'm amazed too. I mean, I'm, I'm overwhelmed just looking backwards. But I think it's very, very important that we remain true designers while we have theories, while we, while we uh, intervene in business at much higher levels than we used to, that we still understand that the way to get there, the way to get to a solution to a breakthrough is still very much about the designer's work. A lot of it happens by hand. Um, in fact, you know, we built about 30 to 40 prototypes in-house. Every single one of them is uglier than the next. But I can promise you that every single one was like, the whole team was jumping up and down because every single one of these prototypes, and there's many more, was a proof point, was a place where we said, oh, this works. Let's, let's try it this way, let's add this, let's add that, let's break it. And, and yet, always more drawings, more, um, more experimentation with materials, with structures. The breakthroughs that we came up there with uh, became a principle, be became this notion of uh, eco-dematerialization, taking materials out of everything. You saw here, even just on the handle, on the side handle, we went from 100% to um, half the amount of material. Um, sort of continuing the process from left to right here where you see how things get hollowed out. And the, and the, the principle of eco-dematerialization is less materials means less weight, means less cost, means less carbon footprint.